Welcome back, you guys. Hey, I liked yesterday's video so much I decided to do another one. So we're gonna get the shot out out of the way. Right bit of a rare tank today, uh, rare variant of the Sherman at least. We got the M4 A1 E8 76. So with that, you guys know the drill. We're gonna get into the history of the vehicle and I get into the tour. All right, so you guys have heard me go over the history of the Sherman before, but just in case you haven't heard it before, we're gonna go over it. So it's least particularly this variant of the Sherman. So this is an M4A1 hull. The M4A1 was designed in 1942, and that's when the first one rolled up the assembly line. And the US Army wanted a medium tank that could carry, uh, not in this case, but in the early war case, a 75 millimeter gun that was already in the US inventory for uh, armor purposes. They wanted to replace their light scout cars and reconnaissance tanks that they had um, back from the 30s. So it started with development of the M3 Lee, which developed into the M4 Sherman. So what variant we're looking at here particularly today is the M4A1 E8. So it's actually a late war modification variant of the Sherman. Right. So this particular variant that we're looking at here, like I said, it's an M4A1 E8 76 millimeter. So this would have been developed probably around 1943, 1944 is when these would have been starting to be made because as you guys will see on the suspension later, it has the E8 suspension system. So this would have been a late war tank that probably would have landed probably sometime after D-Day. So these tanks, or this particular variant would have saw action uh, after D-Day and into like the fight for the Rhineland and all the way up to the end of the war. With some of these planning to be extended to the Pacific, but I'm not sure 100% if some of these variants, this particular variant, made it over. Now a little history part of this here is, so they used the turrets from a prototype tank in the inventory, the T-20 and the T-23, which were designed to replace the M4 Sherman actually. And that would later develop into the M26 Pershing, which we've also done in a video on. Um, so the turret you're looking at up there is actually the T-23 turret, I believe, that would have been used. And it has the later, uh, later modified 76 millimeter gun, which we'll go into more when we get into the tour. So that pretty much does it for World War II history. Uh, going after World War II, um, I think maybe some of these, because it was modified with the E8 suspension, maybe a couple of these probably would have made it to Korea, but not too many. So we had more updated tanks by that point. And by then it probably would have been phased out by the early 50s, late 50s, this tank would have been out of service, at least in the US inventory. Now other countries, such as like Israel and stuff, would upgrade these tanks. They would keep the E8 suspension system and they would put like 105 millimeter guns and a bunch of other stuff into the turret later creating like the super sherman and the israeli sherman and all that stuff and they saw action all the way up until like the 90s so that's pretty much the service life and history of this vehicle with that we'll get into the tour Getting into the tour of the front of the vehicle, uh, the signature design and shape of this, you can tell uh, by her shape that she is a M4A1 Sherman. So one of the very early production variants of the Sherman. This was a cast iron hull, about 51 millimeters of armor. So equivalent to about like two inches of steel, two inches of armor. Uh, you got your iron bolt lifting plugs here. You have your brush guards, your front uh, blackout marker lights, and your front headlights. You can also see that they've got the cast iron bolts up here on the front. The cameraman wants to come up here and get a shot of that. So up here, you got the cast iron bolts right here. This would basically hold the transmission and stuff in, make it easier to access the power pack and all that stuff. And you can tell the producer of this vehicle right here was actually General Motors, just like we looked at on the other M4A1 that we looked at. But this is another General Motors tank. So right here, we have the, uh, the travel lock for the gun, obviously. It's locked in right now. You have your ball mount for the 30 caliber machine gun. So this is where your radio operator would sit, and then your driver would sit next to him over there. And you got your front fender guards here and a couple extra things just around to put like hang stuff and equipment onto the just tank. Just like with any Sherman 2, this would have a crew of five. You would have your radio operator slash bow gunner, your driver, your commander would sit up there, your gunner and your loader would all be inside the turret. When we get up in the turret, I'll show you exactly where the positions are. We're gonna get cast iron bolts. Right here on the front fender marking where the power pack will be accessed and the transmission, we have designation for this vehicle. So based off this designation, this would be a 9th Armored Division, 19th Armored Regiment, Headquarters Company, of, and a 1st Platoon Tank. 
is what he's wanted this for me. If you want to come up and get a shot of this. And then right here, we got a couple of extra things just for mounting like tools and hardware, extra track links. And that'll pretty much do it for the front, you guys. With that, we'll hop into the turret. All right, so hopping up into the turret, you guys, right here, as you see, I was talking about earlier, we got the T23 turret, which is one of the prototype turrets from the T20 and the T23 prototype. Right here, this is where your commander would sit. So right here, this would be his hatch. And right here, you would have the hatch for your loader. And then your uh, the gunner would be seated uh, just under the commander. So right here is your commander. The gunner would be seated about right up there, where you can see the serial number markings. And then in here would be your loader. And you can see that this is a uh, spring-mounted uh, system for the hatches so that they need to get out faster. They can come out on a spring. Right here is your mount for your 50 caliber machine gun or if a 30 caliber if they wanted to. Right here is a mount for a spotlight. If you want to put a spotlight or another machine gun, it would also be a uh, rest for the barrel. So it could be a holder for the barrel if they were driving uh, like they are right now with travel lock. So you can see up here, uh, if we can get a shot of that, if you can see up there, that's where the gunner's periscope is. And the Lotus periscope is on this side over here. So this was a, like I said, the T23 turret, it has a 76 millimeter gun, the M1A1 76 millimeter gun. The signifying feature of that is that it has a muzzle brake bore evacuator on it. So that pretty much does it for the turret, you guys. Back here would be mounts for your combo equipment right here. And you off to the side, you got more iron bolt lifting plugs. So that pretty much does it for the turret, you guys. With that, we'll hop down to the side. All right, so getting a little more into the turret, as we were showing you guys from the back, we figured we'd show you guys from the front a little bit. So right here, this is actually the periscope for your gunner. Over here would be one of the periscopes for the loader. And you can see right here, you have a nice thick mantlet with the, uh, these bolts here would actually be used for a canvas covering to cover up the metal. And you got more iron bolt lifting plugs here. The turret would be about 76 millimeters thick, so about three to four inches thick. So a little thicker than the hull armor because if it could, it could probably take a little more hit to the turret than it would uh, to the front of the actual hull. So where I'm standing, like I said earlier, is where your co-driver would be slash machine gunner slash radio operator. And this is his periscope with his bush guard. Where the cameraman is standing, shout out to Henriquez, uh, he is where the driver would be. And you can see the driver's periscope and that would be his hatch for that. Like I said earlier, commander's hatch, loader's hatch, mount for the 50 caliber machine gun. Um, and it also has another marking for General Motors and all that stuff for the turret. So with that, we'll hop down to the side, you guys. Right, hopping into the side of the vehicle, you guys. Well, the signifying feature that makes this Sherman a M4A1 E8 is the E8 suspension system. This is the HVSS, so high volume suspension system. Now it's kind of had like hydraulics kind of like working in here. So that's what this is here. You got your all your road wheels here. You got your drive sprocket in the front which would later switch to the back for uh, when the main battle tanks started coming out. But the drive spot was in the front during these World War II era vehicles. In the back, you have your rear road wheel, support wheel. On the side, um, you normally have like stowage muscles or something here. As you can see, there's these little mounts. If you wanna come and get a shot of that. These little bolt mounts will be used as shown here to mount track links, extra track links. And what you see on here, on these little ends of the track links here, these would be uh, for end connectors, otherwise known as duck bills, to make the tracks wider and easier for the tank to go through mud. On the side, you got these little support beams here that would basically allow this to mount if they want to. Basically just dust covers for the suspension. That would probably go down to about like right where my hand is. Probably about to right here to keep some of the dust down. And on the side of the turret, again, you can see more iron bolt lifting plugs, but you can also see this hatch right here. This hatch will be used to basically feed ammo in and out or air out the tank if they were shooting a lot. So you can feed ammo through there, throw ammo out, and let the, uh, the crew vent out so they don't suffocate. <laughs> so with that, that pretty much does it for the side, you guys. With that, we're getting to the right, back. So getting into the back of the vehicle, you guys, right here. You can see the compartment for the engine. It's still locked up. She's welded shut, but that's where access to the engine would be. You got your tow mount right here and also your uh, tow bolts. This actually, this stowage vessel back here would be used for extra rations, sandbags, fuel cans, anything they want for back here, they'd have their jerry cans. Now, you can see the mounts for it, come here. You can see the mounts for it, but it doesn't have it on here. This tank would actually feature the talk box. Because of it having the upgraded turret, the talk box would be right here, so infantry and cavalry troops could feed directly into the commander and talk to him from in the turret from out here. Uh, same markings as on the front, on the fenders back here. 
This is where your rear fenders would be. You can see this uh, the E8 suspension and the tracks. They say the engine deck. You have your, this tail light's actually still intact with the rear blackout marker lights. And then you have the brush guards for that. And right here is the engine deck. You guys can see the engine deck. So we are just talking about the engine deck. The engine was a Continental R975 C4 radial gasoline turbine engine nine cylinder. Holy cow, that's a mouthful, but that's the engine to have. So what it would take this baby out to would be about 30 miles per hour. Um, if you took the speed governor off, the no fun switch, road speed like how we are near now, maybe 32 to 35 miles an hour if you wanted to. And then the transmission that we were talking about earlier up at the front is a synchro mesh uh, five speed transmission. It is, uh, had five four speed, one reverse speed. So that pretty much does it for the back. With that, we'll get to the front of this tank and close out the video, guys. Let's go. So with that, you guys, I want to say thank you for tuning in to episode of 10 of Tank Chats. Uh, today's video was on the M4A1 E8 Sherman. Uh, beautiful piece of machine from all of I'm going to go spend some time in this vehicle. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. See you next time.